Hello, the three amigos are here again. I need to get Kristen to recreate this meeting, I think. <laughs> Drop me from <laughs> Like, go recreate the original on the knowledge calendar. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Kristen. Hey, good morning. Morning. How is everyone this morning? Or evening. <laughs> I like everything. <laughs> Good. Nice. Okay. So I'm still getting the hang of all of this in terms of running this this meeting. <laughs> so, and Kai, if I'm forgetting anything major, please jump in to read this. Um, okay, so we have the agenda here, and it I heard that this is already being recording. The meeting is being recorded, so that's correct. Yeah. Someone else has got it. Okay. Yeah, so so basically, Kristen, the way it works is the first person in the meeting, uh, and that is between myself, Andre, and Kai, whoever comes first, it's recorded to their uh, computer. And then I'm gonna, um, whoever records it, it'd be nice if they just up, right, upload it to GitLab Unfiltered to the Knowledge Group channel. Um, but Kai, is Kristen in that administrator group? That she needs to be added so that if she shows up first, she can do that. I have posted one thing to unfilter so far, so I did get the permissions to be able to do that. Is that, is that what you mean? I don't know. I don't know. I think I don't think Kristen is a co-host of this meeting yet. Mm. What I think needs to happen is like someone. Zoom. Yeah, Kristen should probably cancel the Siri. Well, I'll say two things. One, the knowledge Siri does like series doesn't need to happen at this time like anymore right like you guys could adjust based on like the new group of people of knowledge like without me being there right to a different weekly sync and a different weekly ux sync time slot uh, oh, I, I would say being mindful of the fact that like andre is in all of them and has source code on monday and tuesday and not an editor on wednesday so like we kind of get to thursday and like that's the day but um like the meetings could be adjusted i think what should happen is like um i think I created the knowledge calendar. I created the original one. The invites and the Zoom meetings are linked to my Zoom account. I would okay. suggest that like those meetings are canceled and new ones are created and Kristen sets them up in her Zoom account or someone sets them up and then um, adds the co-host as appropriate and settings and recording and all that. So, I would... Okay, that works. Um, yeah. Oh, and I, I was seeing, I just put my agenda in the one. I was gonna say that I can I can do I can do later. So it's three p.m. for me. So um, if you want to find a, a, a later slot, it's just a matter of finding an like a slot where you can put yeah. it. Uh, Andre Thursday is the is one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm. I mean, I'm good with this slot. I like getting up at eight a.m. for this one. I don't know if anyone else has a preference though, but we could. I'm fine. While we're keeping. moving the date. The spot <laughs> works for me. So okay. I guess just canceling the active one and just yeah. creating the one from the next week onwards. I'll get that set up and then that way I can have it linked, I guess, to my Zoom and have the videos go in the proper permissions. Cool. Um, should I get started with my point? Yes. Okay. Um, might be a bit too, too early, but I wanted to, to let you know some of the things that I've been discussing with Natalia in specific. Um, well, actually, I just remembered I have a new point, another point, because we have another front end engineer starting on Monday. So there'll be two front end engineers. Um, nice. The second is going to be based in Australia, which is going to be interesting oh. in the time zones. <laughs> but it, I feel it's really good because then they can collaborate with back end issues with Luke much closer to the time zones and everything. Um, but I, okay. it, I, also have a, I also have a back end engineer from Australia starting in November. There we go. We're building a team out there. Uh, I should get out there then. Uh, so that means that we're going to have two people on the front end. Um, and we are discussing me and Natalia. And he feels so he will be onboarding for the next couple like of weeks. He should be able to start deliverable work on 12.6. And that's why me and Natalia were discussing. There's a, there's a couple of like annoying tech debt issues that have been accruing over the next couple of months, over the past couple of months. Uh, and we feel like 12.6 would be a great point for us to just take care of some of those. Um, so I'm just giving you a heads up right now because it means that there'll be a little bit more tech debt issues on 12.6 than usual, although we'll have double capacity. 
So what I mean by this is that um, unless you unless you disagree, um, I think twelve six will be a little bit still slim on feature capacity because we'll have tech debt. But from twelve seven onwards, we'll have much more capacity for feature work. Uh, and the idea here is that there's so many things that are affecting the day-to-day -day work that if we don't fix them now, it will be even bigger problems later. And I'm compiling the list of things that we should address. Um, me and Natalia, we're, we're building that up. Um, but closer to the date, I'll have concrete issues to point to, weights, that sort of thing, and then I'll let you, and then we can talk a little bit about, hey, this feature could re really needs to go into 12.6 and we can find capacity and that sort of thing. But I, from now, my point is just to, Give a heads up that we're thinking about doing a more heavy tech debt release on 12.6 than usual. Um, but since we're going to have double capacity, you might not really feel it. Um, but yeah, that was my heads up, okay. basically. And yeah. when a new engineer ramps up, though, aren't they pretty slow the first round? The first so for the first, for the first three weeks or so, um, they'll be working on small issues and that sort of thing to get acquainted with the code base. And yeah, for the first couple of um, milestones, they will be slower. But for example, uh, if we give them like refactor work uh, that are really that, that is really well specified and, and planned and we give them an intro, they'll still be slow, but they'll be getting acquainted with the code base much quicker um, because they're touching several parts of the code base. But yes, I do, I do expect 12.6 to not be his fastest. But uh, by 12.7, he should be pretty much um, not right there at his top of, top of the game, but close. Nice. That's exciting to have another one come on so quick. I didn't think we would get Yeah, that was partner. the plan, by the way. The plan for December, uh, for the end of the year, would be to have two, two front-end engineers in, in um, knowledge and four in source code and three in editor. And we have pretty much that number achieved. So we, we, we've met all the goals before december which is great very cool and that our capacity becomes what for front end what's the the points um with two i have to check i it's around 20 it should be around 20 uh at this at this point uh it, it will i what i usually do is like i will ramp them up from like 60 to 70 percent on the first cycle then the second i'll put them up to 100 but so I'll, I'll ramp them up in terms of capacity but i have to play with time off as well uh but yes the the overall capacity of the team should go up to 20 somethings okay cool that's awesome andre yeah. i was just wondering do you have any names for us for your team members uh names yeah what their mm -hmm. names are oh <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom Quirk. Okay, nice. Tom. Yeah, so it'll be Natalia and Tom uh, building this. And we currently have the intern from Defend called Sam Beckham, front end. Already working cool. on it. That's it. I don't have anything nice. else. I, okay. I think, Kristen, you have Yeah, we'll skip through. Okay. Um, I wanted to just quickly touch base on that question you had yesterday, Luke, about the two deliverables. Oh, is Luke's not on? Um, did I wonder if that got addressed? But I, 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 I actually did address. Okay. That. Um, I think we moved one of the stretches out, and we get, there was a deliverable that was added. I talked to Kai about it. I think you were CC, but we moved. Uh, we we moved one of the stretches out. Okay. All right. I'll. Get up to speed. I'm just looking. I see capacity is at 15 currently, and it was at 14. So, and he had some items that were in review that might be showing up. So, um, from 12.4, that had kind of slipped a little. Okay. So I'll take I'll take a look at it and I'll reach out and let you know. Okay. As long as we're still okay and we haven't gone over, um, so we feel we can handle that. Yeah, I think we're okay with him because I talked to him about it yesterday, but I'll, I'll revisit it. Okay, um, so the next, the next one, um, this is just a general question um, in terms of the team and just, um, I'm kind of, I guess the next two questions go together, um, but I'm just kind of opening up the floor if you guys have any questions about um, the products that we're delivering and also like the process that we use as a team and just sort of start the conversation. We don't have to go through it today. Um, but one of the things that 
I'm kind of learning as I'm onboarding is just um, validating these issues before we get to code. And I think we might be at a, a very good place if we are slowing down a little bit with onboarding the front end to try to get our design process, our design and validation with Jarek. Um, if we can aim to get that a release ahead of engineering and really make it our goal, like me and Jarek, to fully flesh out these issues so that you've got everything you need to um, scope it, including almost like mandatory designs on every single issue, even if it's just like a screenshot with an arrow. Um, that would really help me get these into these workflows that they're looking at now in the, in the PM org, which shows as you take an issue from beginning to end and you really do go through a design phase and the UX team is that's their part of it. But we just, um, as a team, I'm just wondering if you guys have any feedback on that or thoughts on it um, and incorporating the design flow into our team and what, um, what you guys think about that. I can share my thoughts. Um, so one of the things that I've, that I've seen, um, well, not just across GitLab, but across other companies as well, is I think the result is much better when we have designers and engineers working together. Um, so I don't really oppose about having those, you know, staggered um, work on design focus, getting the, um, the validation um, done and all that. and. And then we move on to, to, to development. So they can be in a separate milestone, but I would prefer that if those issues for designers are, are created and they are assigned to Jarek, for example, still have at least a front-end engineer assigned to it as consultants. Um, and that will take small capacity out of their, out of their um, month, um, usually a one or something, but it will, they will be available to jump on calls, to check whether something is doable, um, because instead of, you can have the validation from the perspective of the user, uh, but then code wise, it might require a really big refactor uh, and they can identify that right from the start. So my, 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 my concern always goes to, if we split them up, uh, will it be like the old days where we just like throw a prototype over, <laughs> over the wall right. and it'll be like coding alone that I really don't want. But apart from that, I don't really have a problem with having this, these two phases, if we can manage that but I would rather have some, someone assigned to that issue. That, that was my only thought. Yeah, we definitely don't want to end up in like a waterfall situation. I'm definitely not advocating for that, but um, I think- I understood, yeah. Yeah, I think that just having that goal to be, to have all these discussions really fleshed out before you guys actually put scope on. Um, and also just empowering Jarek to kind of run the show in terms of, this is what we're doing, this is why, this is the user's pain, this is how we're addressing it. Here are three or four ways we could address it. Now let's like talk about why we chose option three and just so our, our whole team gets it. Um, I, I, yeah. I would say, I think it's a good idea to do that because I find a lot of times we kind of get way down into maybe the technical discovery or discussing it or or implementing something and then the question comes up, well, do we need this? Who, who said we needed this? Why do we need this? And you do spend a lot of time explaining that answer or we go to UX and then ask them to kind of justify why we're implementing it or you know, come up with the explanation. So possibly getting a little bit, getting that done earlier might save us time. What if they find out that it's something the customers don't want? Now you say right. it's all that, that time and discussion. Um, and of course, if they need, support or they have to ask someone a question, whether it's back end or front end, we're yeah. available. But if it turns out that users don't even want something, that can save us a lot of work early on. Right. Or they want something else that we didn't think about. For sure. Or we can validate it with some kind of mock-up, right? Like Jarek, you can do a clickable, if it's a big feature, a clickable, usable prototype that no one has to code and we can actually get it in front of our users too and see what they think before we even touch code on some of those bigger ones, obviously. Yeah. As things come would, up when we go fast, we wouldn't do that. But I think it would be interesting too, depending on, like you're saying, scope of what we might be looking to ship, we could utilize that milestone to do different types of research depending on the scope. So if it's something small we're adding to the UI, we could say, okay, because this is a small piece of the UI, we can do a clickable prototype or 
hey, we're looking to add a new section or a new process for design management, you know, maybe we should look at, you know, take a further step back at a broader view and do more just a general, you know, questions or, you know, tap, tap uh, UX research to do that process. And I would love to, you know, collaborate with everyone here to, you know, put together sort of that, what that process looks like. Okay, we're starting the milestone. We're going to start looking into this particular piece. And then like, what do we, what steps do we take to do that? And then, so like more defined scheduling of how we're going to approach that with uh, these types of milestones. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I also have a question about, like, when I look at issues that we're working on, they're never related. I don't think they're really related to a UX issue. Is, 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 is that, am I missing that? Did I miss something? They that just get a like tag. I'm pretty sure they just get a label of, for the UX team to pick up on them. They don't get, other than the beautification issues, I don't believe they get, Jerry, right. you would know. But I was, I I'm pretty yeah. sure it's just that if it's I'm a label. If I'm an engineer yeah. and I'm working on something, if UX has done all this research, right? It could possibly be valuable yeah. to me, but I just didn't, it's not linked, it's not related. Yeah. So I well, just I think UX that to do it. Presenting that too, that's gonna be up to me as well. If I know that research was done, I should be editing the issue as well to have very clear summaries that link those things at the beginning of the issue too. That's going to be on me as I learn more about it to like, you shouldn't have to like read an encyclopedia to understand what you get when an issue is handed to you. So like just having those concise summaries relates to this uh, research relates to this epic, like just some really high level stuff to sort of, so you can grok it immediately. Yeah, we should have, that, uh, that would be the goal. <laughs> Yeah, evidence-based decisions um, with artifacts, like, you know, that people can go into front and back and whoever can see, oh, yeah. this is why they're doing it. Yeah. Because um, questions keep, always pop up as to why are we right. doing it? It's like, how many right. times do you know, explain it? Yeah. And I think sometimes, and I'll, I'll have to, I'm just getting going, so I haven't really done this, but I think just a short summary that I could do after having read 50 comments and just summarize it there's so much discussion over x number of months here's what we deduced from that here's like what we're gonna do here's what we're not and why tldr um, yeah that's super important um i've worked on issues when i was an engineer that had been open for two years uh and the discussions as you can imagine were long yeah uh, but as long as that the the single source of truth bubbles up to the description of the issue you can still manage to understand it um but yeah that's super useful to have yeah. So I'll do my best to, as I'm learning these, um, as I'm getting up to speed, I'll try to TLDR as much as I learn as I go, which I'll, it's a new process for me. Um, Cause I'm where I worked before it was a much smaller company. I was essentially writing what we were going to do. It wasn't like it was coming up through all the comments. So I'm, I got to learn that um, being here at GitLab. Um, but yeah, that's really good feedback. Um, and then the other thing that I was considering and just thinking is if Jarek, if you can, we can talk about this later, but if you can even present to us, to our team, prototypes in Envision and Figma, one or the other or both, so we can like interact with you. So we're, our team is getting also just that knowledge of how those tools work, because that's really the space that we're in. Yeah. So you can like go outside the box, give us different ways of presenting links to these prototypes so that we're all familiar with the, the space that we're in. Um, yeah, absolutely. That would be particularly yeah. useful for me uh, and probably the engineers as well, because like we know about these tools. Um, I've heard about them ever since like the, the first ones that showed up, but we don't use them. We don't know the flows. Right. We don't know how they're evolving and I've seen Figma announcing things like every week or, or, or whatever. So it'd be good yeah. for us to keep tabs on what they're doing and, and to learn from them as well. Yeah, I think that would be sweet. And I know, uh, Jared, Christy told me you guys can pick any tool and that gets expensed either. So you get to do whatever workflow, but she'll let you buy them all essentially because you need to really be up to speed in that space. Yeah. Um, but I think that would be awesome for our empathy for our users as well and just seeing how the whole process works. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, in terms of, in terms of strategy, um, 
this is more for product, but um, one of the things that I think we'll never be able to compete with is like direct competition with Figma or something like yeah. that. But it could be useful for us to identify spaces where they're not being able to deliver like we having, like you, Kristen, you mentioned yeah. that in the previous call, like those things we can do that they can't do uh, is going to be very beneficial in knowing what they're doing and then how we can, oh, there we go. Yeah. This is yeah, take, take it, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so this, I mean, this is still rough. This is not, this is not like published anywhere, but this is how I've been seeing it as I've been learning from issues and just throwing things visually onto this sketch comp. But yeah, I would say that right now, here's what we've done, right? We've posted designs to an issue. We're getting design feedback and um, revision history essentially on each of those static assets that were uploaded. And that's the space, like Envision essentially plays across the whole board, but Envision, Figma, we can be a player in that sense of presenting designs and approving them on an issue. Um, what we don't want to get into is being Sketch or being Envision or saying that there's only one way to do it or get into this design system, company-wide design systems, which is local on your Mac where that's what the marketing team, like how they set their logos and everything. I don't think we want to even touch that space. Um, but like you may have seen, like in that other call, the des developer handoff, the fact that we would already have designs on an issue and could then compare it to the code that's ready to go with overlays or however we do it. That gets me super excited. No one's touching that. I think that would be they would show up on like Hacker News or Design News because it's just such a different type of feature. I haven't seen anyone do that yet. Um, and of course, we could do some of these other things too, like versioning of your sketch files the way Simply does. Like we could put a repo on a local sketch file, which is what our UXers do behind the scenes. But I think the part that's getting me excited, having read a lot of the backlog, is just this the handoff. Like the, to yeah. me, having done UX, having done front end, that would be freaking amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm personally excited about that too because we have the code and we have the designs. So it's all there for us to just meld together somehow, some way. So yeah, that's really exciting. I would just like to add that this is pretty amazing, this slide. So nice, thank you. Thanks for putting that together. I think I showed this uh, to my boss in my one-on-one -on -one and he thought I was saying we were gonna just sort of like destroy Envision, Figma and everything. Like the way <laughs> the arrows go, it's not very clear. So like it does need, I think, another revision of just saying you could flow your designs through Envision to GitLab. These arrows are kind of lame right now. They, they're confusing, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. we're too biased because we're in we're in the we're in building the the tool. But the way I see it is like we have to we have to provide like a, a value to the user for them to even come on, and then yeah. then we'll be able to pull them into stuff that we that only us will be able to pull off, like the visual review app, that sort of thing. But if we don't give yeah. them a place to discuss and improve designs, why would they be even here? So yeah. we definitely, I think I think we can definitely pull them in with some things like that are equipped. Like that are comparable, but then sell them completely with the unique things, we, the unique sale pr proposition that we can give. So yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And if we get this experience really locked down, like I'm okay with working on the technical debt or any of the user experience debt around posting, editing, deleting an image or a design from an issue, that core experience should be just so simple and easy. Yes. And it's it's core to the rest of the flow because if it's annoying to go edit an image, if I can't just drag it on like I can in Envision, I literally could just drag from my desktop to the item and it's there. Yeah. Um, if we don't hit that, it's like one of those, I call them toilet paper features. Like people expect it to be there and they're angry if it's not, but they're never going to say, oh, I want toilet paper. <laughs> That's always um, been one of my core philosophies is, <laughs> your core function, your core, what you do should be absolutely killer. It should be like, you know, top level. And then all the other features outside of that can sort of this, they come secondary to making the very core feature absolutely phenomenal. That's yeah. Yeah, I would just add that the, from the front end perspective, like the uploading right now is pretty much at the most basic level. 
uh, we can definitely do a lot more work there and improve that. I think it comes like this, is the, this was the MVC of uploading, so, so to speak, but we should definitely, as we're having more space and we have, touched, we have covered like the basic corners that we need, we'll, we'll get to revise that and, and do a much better upload that you don't have to have a maximum of 10 um, designs per, per batch. Um, other thing that to me kind of feels weird is like having the file name be the canonical ID so if I could just be, I'm, on, I'm in a design and I could just like upload a replacement regardless of the file, kind of yeah. seems like something, but I don't know, if, I'm pretty sure you've seen this, but Marcel is working on this plugin from Sketch directly to export. So Which is so that, cool. It is, it is. And all those kinds right of things here. that it is. Well, it's the equivalent of this guy right here. Of ah, I see. That he's see. working on. It's like a local connector that would send your designs up. Yeah. Because from when, when Marcel was explaining that to me, he was, he was telling me, I mean, if it's an easy thing for me to put my designs into GitLab, then I might. But if it's hard and I have to go out and export them and then go on the website and drag them and then wait 10 by 10, yeah. it's, it's painful. Um, yeah. So all of those things will, can really make a difference. Um, but, but, but yeah. So Interestingly, awesome. you mentioned the drag and drop. When you drag an artboard outside of Sketch, it's exporting it locally as uh, a TIFF image. So oh, okay. in theory, From the artboard. you could, if we had a draggable feature, drag and drop feature on designs, in theory, you could drag a sketch artboard into GitLab design and have it upload potentially. Right, because this would go as a TIFF. To, yeah. What I do when I, when I drag out of here is I usually switch it to PNG right here, and then yeah. I can just drag it like that, and I can yeah. go right onto Envision in one. Sweet. Exactly. Yep. But I, I, I'm changing it, formally changing it to PNG. Yeah. Um, but that would also be cool if we could sync the, the artboards themselves. But Kristen, I had a question about this mm -hmm. diagram. Mm -hmm. I can't tell where this, uh, the third, the, the column where you have Marcel. Yeah. Where that's, what box it fits in. It's not under current, mm -hmm. not under later, it's not under next. So it's just kind of floating out there. I just put Marcel on right now while he was talking. Um, but yeah, craft is what you use to post your local sketch files. Like I'm in sketch here right now. If I had craft running, I could go like this, click and hit, hit a one time button that would show up here and it would go to envision in one click. Like someone would tell me a revision, I would do it, I would hit it and it would be, it would be live in a second. So, so when, when, were you Marcel's, about, when were you thinking about doing it? Like, in terms of the timing because it's, it's oh not, it, yeah it's so yeah. this marcel one i don't know I, i'll have to look at it more that's like a is that an official project right no, it's kind of skunk skunk it. Yeah. yeah but we could that plugin that, that would be like a local mac plugin that would connect your sketch to gitlab um it's not on the official roadmap but i just threw it here because it's the same as what craft does and I think it will be really important I just didn't prioritize it as like a next focus but if he gets it to a point where it's like almost there I feel like we should loop this in and like make it an official GitLab plug-in for sketch does that make sense yeah it's a it's official it works flawlessly from what I've used the, uh, a few times so that's cool as, yeah we could maybe get more of the UX team using it too but yeah, I feel like we can make this official if it's really good and we can support it. Because if we go live and then we don't have the resources to support that tool, um, I would I just have to understand more about it to understand. Um, did that answer your question, Darva? Yes. And I think we're about at time. Yeah, we are. Um, OK, I didn't have any other agenda items, so I think we can wrap unless anyone has any burning questions or things to say. Nope, all good. Thanks for the overview. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.